Hello everyone, my name is Emmanuel Adewole. I am doing the I am not ashamed God's, of God series with my friend Victor Santos who did his in Portuguese and another one of our friends and the whole point is you know to talk about God it should be something you do freely willingly and it's something you should not be ashamed of if someone asks you people passively say they're Christians but don't really express themselves they don't really share God's word which the Bible said in the beginning you know go forth and preach the word we're all sinners I am a sinner guilty of my own sins but I continually ask God to make perfection out of the imperfect creature that I am now I'm going to share a bit of my daily devotions with you hopefully you like it and you too can also learn and you know go about your daily lives and take some teachings for what I'm about to tell you the first one I'm going to cover is just a simple thank you saying thank you and appreciating God for what he is doing in your life um, it's from the Joyce My series for March 29th and the Bible reading I'm going to be covering is 1st Chronicles 16 verse 34 all give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy and loving kindness endure it forever we should always give thanks in anything you do always give thanks to God if you wake up say Lord I thank you for letting me sleep and letting me wake up safe when you go to bed at night say Lord I thank you for a long day you could have had a bad day at work you could have had almost had an accident you could have seen some things that you saw but didn't affect you just as simple to say thank you Lord thank you Lord for protecting me sometimes you might want to say thank you Lord for protecting my family for watching over me maybe you're a student you have an exam you say thank you Lord for giving me the understanding if you're a professional athlete you can say thank you Lord for letting me being able to do my dream job every day little things these are all stewards of what God understands and God appreciates things you cannot feed him <clears throat> food you cannot feed God you know anything mortal anything that's earthly it's irrelevant to him the simple thing God wants us is just deep down from my heart for us to say thank you I thank you Lord for what you are doing in my life and if you if, if, if you feel like you can also pray for people you know you can say God I thank you for providing shelter or providing food for those that do not have a place to live a lot of us see people living on the streets and things like that you know but we say thank you Lord I thank you Lord for their life I thank you Lord for the life of my family again a simple token when you get home at night just a simple prayer you can say even at work when you're on the bus anyway just say Lord I thank you and I really appreciate it in number one I'm going to talk to you about this one is a bit more in depth but I hope I explain it well enough to where you can gain the teachings that I'm trying to bring out of it it's Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 7 and 8 and this is from the New King James Version it says the Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were numerous than other people for you were the fewest of all peoples but it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore with your forefathers that he brought you out of the mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery from the power of Pharaoh king of Egypt now this Bible passage simply ex explained was relating to the story of the Israelites when they were captives in the land of Egypt but this same Bible passage applies to each one of us every day um, we can learn that God loves us it says in the book of John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever just as slightly just believe just a little bit believe in God will not die but live to have everlasting life this passage in the book of Deuteronomy it's pretty much trying to explain that things that happen to you now might not necessarily be because 
God loves you extraordinarily more than someone else. Sometimes you might feel like, why are you so blessed? Sometimes you might feel like you want a new car, out of the blue, someone buys the car for you. You want a new job, you say, God, I want a new job, and boom, you have a new job. He's trying to let you understand here that there's some prayers that you may do that it might not be for you that he answers that prayer, but for your kids and your kids' kids, for your nephews, your relatives, that he will bless them for generations to come. It might not directly be, be, be to you. You might say prayer, but God might not feel that that prayer is meant for you. He might feel like it's more beneficial for the destiny of those to come after you. He sees all things. Is the beginning, is the present, is the future, is the maker of the heaven and the earth. No one can hide from the power of the Almighty God. He sees all things. He knows you before you were made. Sometimes when our parents prayed, they prayed God for protection over their kids. Sometimes when our forefathers prayed, they prayed that their children will not lack like they lacked. All these prayers. It's not really passive prayers. God remembers them and he takes them into account. He is a never forgetting God. He is an omnipresent, omniscient and ever stable God. He remembers a covenant. When you say a prayer, he remembers and it's a covenant. It's almost like he owes a debt when you say a prayer and you say it from the bottom of your heart with all genuineness, with all willingness. This is the passage that God is trying to point out that even though even though it might seem that you are blessed some of the blessings might be because he loves you and he genuinely does love you but some of them he wants us to understand is because of a covenant he has made with our forefathers like from the time of abraham to your great grandfather or your great grandmother to your dad and your mom and he continues on and on and on that's why when you say a prayer say lord i thank you I thank you for what you've done for me and I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of other people around me. Even the people you do not know, say, Lord, I pray that genuinely you will go out and touch every one of them. If you know somebody that is sick, say, Lord, I, I ask that you go and heal them. These prayers you're doing, you're blessing the lives of other people. You are sowing seeds. Now to talk about the last passage I want to cover. It's in, it's in relation to sowing seed and praying for other people as well too. It's the book of Matthew 25 verse 26 and then 28 to 29. Again, this is from the New King James Version as well. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gathered, where I have not scattered seed. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. These are all parables that Jesus told his disciples in preparation for his departure. The parable of the talents is probably, you know, one of the most memorable and the most notable parable that a lot of Christians tend to refer to even in other religions such as Muslim they do tend to refer to some of the parables because they are told and told and retold in different versions and in different forms what is this passage simply trying to tell us we are brothers keepers we have all been given talents now when we say talents it's not necessarily a physical it's not necessarily a blessing or natural talent that the world can see. It can be a talent just to speak to someone. You might have a talent for encouraging. You might have a talent for motivating people. You might have a talent for uplifting the spirits of people. You might have a talent for riches, for money, for wealth. You might have a talent for knowledge. God has blessed us all with each of these things. And what he is trying to let us understand in this Bible passage is that we should go forth the talent he has given us, let us use it to better the lives of other people. There's a status I like to refer to a lot of the time. Do not let the pleasures of your blessings and your talents hinder your purpose and your reasoning for using those talents. 
God is giving you certain specific talents so that you can touch the lives of other people in ways beyond your wildest imaginations, in ways beyond your wildest reasonings. He has given us talents to sow, to sow. If God gives you a talent for playing sports, but you only play that sports, you make the riches and you keep it for yourself and your family, how have you benefited the lives of other people? A small token of appreciation. It could be helping a foundation. It could be starting your own foundation, which could also have financial gains and benefits to you and your family. But also, it could be many things. It could be at work, maybe out of the little you have, there's somebody that doesn't have enough at work. Maybe you bring food for them. Maybe there's a beggar that lives down your street. Every time you go to your local restaurant, maybe a Subway, maybe, you know, a KFC, maybe you buy a McChicken for them or some chicken nuggets and you give it to them. All these tokens of appreciation, you're sowing seeds. You're sowing seeds into the lives of other people. You're sowing seeds that you may not directly rip today. You may not see the benefits of sowing those seeds today, but you will see later. Your generations will see later. Your family will see later. Because, like I said, our God is a just God. Our God is a forever appreciative God. He appreciates when you do good. As the Master replied, if He's giving you all these talents, and you know you have these talents, why are you being wicked and being selfish? Share that talent. Let other people benefit from what God has sold in your life. Let your life be a shining example. You don't have to be anything special. You don't have to go above and beyond your means. But the little that you know how to do, the very little that you know how to do, use it to glorify God. It could be through your words, through your actions, through your financial gains. Through your experience, through your connection, always love one another. And like I said, in all things, be thankful. Be thankful that God has put you in this position because you are not special above anyone else. I am not special above anyone else. We are just fortunate and we are blessed. The word is blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed to be in such a position. I hope my devotion today has touched the lives of many people out there. And you guys continue to pray and put your trust in God. Have faith. Anything you are going through right now, it's all a phase. God tests you to see if you can come through. God puts you in certain positions to see if you become stronger and tougher or you're going to break. God will never give you anything that's too much from you. Join me as you say this prayer. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for everything you're doing in my life. I just want to thank you for everything you're doing in the lives of other people. I just want to thank you for never letting me go, even in my times of trouble. Lord, I give all glory and all adoration unto your holy name. Heavenly Father, I ask that you go out and you spread your love across the world. I ask God that you go out and you let us see the good in humanity. I pray, good Lord, that we shall not weep or we shall not mourn over any of our family members. I ask, Father Lord God, the strangers that are sick, those that need comfort, those that need life, those that need life, Lord God, I ask that you go forth and you touch them. I ask that you touch them. Heavenly Father, the same way the birds of the skies never go hungry. I pray for everyone listening to this will never go hungry in Jesus' name. Anyone that is looking unto you, Lord God, for one thing or another, I pray, good Lord, that you touch them and you answer their prayer. Everyone that is saying amen right now as I am praying, I pray, good Lord, that amen and hallelujah will never lack in their life in Jesus' name. Tears of sorrow shall be distant from them and the household in Jesus' name. Thank you. Have a blessed day, people.